Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the Samsung Series 7 Slate PC, which is a Windows 7 powered tablet computer that has an Intel Core i5 processor, an 11.6 uh, 11 inch 1366 by 768 pixel display, and a 64 gigabyte solid state disk. There's also a more expensive version with a 128 gigabyte solid state disk. Uh, the 64 gig model comes with a optional, well, it comes with a digital pen and an active digitizer, and I'll show you how that all works together in a minute. Um, if you get the 128 gigabyte model in the U.S., it also comes with this docking station and a keyboard, and we'll go into those in a minute, too. First, let's take a quick look at the device. It's uh, significantly more expensive than some other tablets that we've seen lately, like, say, a $200 Amazon Kindle Fire 7-inch device, or a, depending on when you bought it, $500 or $100 HP touchpad. Um, this guy starts at about $1,049 in the U.S., and uh, part of the reason for that is that you get a much faster processor, um, a larger display, and the Windows operating system and an active digitizer. It's, it's really high-quality stuff, and uh, you kind of need this level of hardware in order to have a really great experience with Windows 7. Windows 7 really was designed for, for some touch input. A lot of people have sort of mocked it and said that it's not touch-friendly, but that's not quite true. It's just that you need to have a reasonably fast processor and preferably an active digitizer and a digital pen like this. Uh, let's take a quick look at some of the hardware. There's a full-sized uh, USB port here. It's covered by a plastic door that's actually pretty hard to get off. So if you use it a lot, you might want to just take this off and leave it off. If you don't use it much, just leave it on. Um, I found that putting a paper clip in here and prying off the door was the easiest way to open it. There's a combo microphone headphone jack here, volume up and down buttons, a UHDMI port for connecting an external display or TV, but you'll need a special adapter there. A standard HDMI is not going to work. Um, metal plated, I believe that's metal, uh, but a nice sturdy power jack. We've got a docking port down here for connecting to the docking station, and there are stereo speakers along the bottom that are reasonably loud. Um, here we've got a screen orientation lock button, and that'll uh, prevent the screen from automatically shifting if you uh, uh, change your grip on the tablet. And a power button, which you can also use to put the device to sleep. We've got stereo microphone inputs and a micro SD card slot that's spring-loaded, so you just pop it in and out like that. Um, along the top, there's a uh, front-facing webcam, and along the bottom, there's a single button that brings up an easy launcher application, which is sort of a full-screen app for launching certain programs. On the back, we've got a higher-quality camera, but still no flash or anything, and some speaker, uh, some uh, ventilation units here. Even though this has a solid-state drive with no moving parts, it does generate a fair amount of heat, and so every now and again when these fans kick in, uh, it'll get a little bit noisy. Um, not too noticeable if you're working in a coffee shop, but it'll be noticeable in a quiet room. Uh, but it does keep it from overheating, um, although it will still get a little bit warm if you're holding it. Taking a quick look at some of these accessories, um, for about $13.49 you get the docking station and the keyboard. The docking station is actually it look, doesn't look like much, but it's actually a pretty neat little accessory. It uh, looks sort of like a nice little block here that folds up for travel. And you pop this open, and it props up the tablet at a nice decent angle, and you dock it and charge it there. And this little guy glows blue when it's uh, docked and charging. Uh, along the back, we've got the power cable, a full-size Ethernet, full-size HDMI, and full-size USB port, and a headphone jack. So um, you can plug in the tablet, and you can keep this plugged into a TV, mouse, keyboard, etc. if you want to, or you can plug in the tablet and uh, have two USB ports, so you can plug in a keyboard and a mouse uh, at the same time, for instance, without getting any sort of extra adapters. The keyboard is pretty good to use. It's, uh, it's a full-size QWERTY keyboard. It's sort of a laptop style in that you have to hit function plus the arrow keys to do page up or page down, uh, or affect the volume keys or some of the other things. But for the most part, it's a comfortable typing experience. It's an island-style keyboard, meaning that there's flat keys, they're not concave, and there's a little bit of space between each of them. It runes on two AA, or AAA batteries, and the battery compartment gives it a little bit of an angle here when you place it down. It's sort of hard to see here, but uh, it props up the back a little bit. The uh, digital pen 
has a nice pointy edge. Uh, this end here can actually be used as an eraser in certain applications. And there's a button that you can press to emulate a right click when you're tapping on the screen. Now take a look at some of the software that comes with the device. Uh, as I mentioned, there's this finger-friendly touch launcher, which is kind of nice. It's, uh, it gives us a little bit of a taste of kind of what we're going to experience when Windows 8 is available in terms of full-screen applications. Um, I suspect we'll start to see a lot more of these types of applications coming soon. Um, but for now, we've got a nice full-screen weather application. There's a full-screen music application. Twitter application. And you can navigate with your fingers. Sort of a waste of space if you ask me in terms of the amount of material that's taken up on this huge screen. But uh, still, if you'd rather navigate with your fingers than anything else, it works. And of course, you can fire up the Internet Explorer web browser, which has been optimized for touch here as well. Now when you tap the uh, URL bar here, we've got an on-screen keyboard, which really, you can see, was not designed very well for touch typing. You can resize it, but it's uh, still not a great touch typing experience. But if you just want to tap a couple of letters at a time, it'll get the trick done. Fortunately, that's not the only way to input text. You can also use handwriting recognition. And this is where the stylus really comes in handy. And actually, the stylus works pretty nicely here as well. Oops. Um, when you're using the keyboard because you can actually see that when you hover over the screen It tells you which letter you're on so that it's easy to see where to tap So I'm not touching the screen yet. I'm just hovering and then I can tap On the screen when I want to um, when you go to handwriting recognition and Things get even more impressive um, I'm, my handwriting is pretty awful. I haven't spent a lot of time in my life using handwriting. I prefer keyboards. But for people who really like handwriting, this works pretty well. And you can train it uh, with your own handwriting by, uh, to, to make it a little bit more precise. So overall, the stylus experience really does help things uh, quite a bit. And again, things that are difficult to do with your fingers, like hover over different areas uh, to see which, which links are highlighted, for instance. Um, much easier to do with a stylus. That also comes into play when you're using the standard Windows desktop here. So say you want to copy from one folder to another. We're going to create a folder, new folder, open that folder, Oops. okay I think we need to close the touch there. Okay, so we've got content in two different folders here, and we can select it and just copy it, as simple as that. So we dragged it in that case. Um, but you can right-click, copy, paste, etc. So moving things between different folders, extraordinarily easy. Doing a lot of Windows-type actions are great when you're using the stylus, and it really makes a huge difference. Uh, definitely helps justify the extra price uh, when compared with a lower-end tablet. Uh, one big problem here, though, is that there's nowhere to store this when you're not using it. Um, if you're the sort of person who loses pens frequently, that can be a big problem. You're going to want to make sure to keep a hold of this, because it's going to be harder to replace than your typical Bic pen. Um, some older tablets were a little bit thicker, had room to sort of store a stylus or a digital pen in the device itself. That's just not the case here. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out, though, was that um, in terms of the touch-based navigation, uh, makes reading pretty easy when you're holding this with two hands. But it weighs about two pounds, so holding with one hand is kind of uncomfortable. And holding it with one hand or two hands in portrait mode is actually a pretty difficult proposition um, because you can see just how the 1366 by 768 pixel display looks pretty good until you turn it sideways and have a 768 by 1366 pixel display. That's kind of a long way to read all the way from the top all the way to the bottom. So while um, it works pretty well as a kind of laptop or desktop replacement when you're using it in widescreen mode, in portrait mode, it's uh, not quite as exciting an experience. So anyways, that's a quick video review of the 
Samsung Series 7 Slate PC. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.